Hi, in this video we will go through a quick overview of Timber's Ontology Explorer. The Ontology Explorer allows users to create, edit, explore, and manage their semantic models. So let's jump in. To access an existing model, we can simply select it from the list in the main menu and click on Model. The second option is by clicking on the Model tab above and selecting the Ontology Explorer. Here we have three options. The first is to create a new knowledge graph by clicking here. The second is to open an existing knowledge graph by clicking on it. And the third option is to open a specific saved knowledge graph exploration. Let's go ahead and open an existing data model to start exploring. Great. Here we can see the data model canvas. To the left of the model, we can find the concept tree, which clearly shows us the different concept hierarchies and classifications as a list. In addition to concepts, we can also see and filter all the properties and relationships that exist in the model by switching from the concept tab to the properties and relationship tabs. We can also perform additional actions on any concept property or relationship by hovering over any of them and clicking on the three dots that appear to their right. Above the tree, we can click on the three horizontal lines to save or load a specific model exploration. We can view the performance dashboard of our selected model. And finally, we can choose to export our selected model to SQL, OWL, or to another Timber instance. Next to that, we have the Create button, which opens a drop-down list of Create options to edit the model. The first option is the Concepts from Data Sources wizard, which enables users to create all the concepts based on the tables in the connected data source. If you would like to learn more about this feature, you can find a dedicated video tutorial about it in Timber's tutorial playlist. The next option is to create concepts from property, which is a quick way to create multiple subconcepts based on unique data values of a specific property. Next, there's the create new concept option, which is used to create a new concept in the model from scratch. Similarly, there's new property, which is used to create a new property in the model. The same goes for new mapping, where users can create new data mappings in the model. Finally, there's the Create Relationships, where users can manually create relationships or use the relationship suggestions Timber automatically detects and recommends. Many of these Create options we just reviewed can also be accessed by right-clicking on any concept and choosing to create, edit, or add any of the elements we just covered, as well as other capabilities and actions which will be shown in the next Ontology Explorer videos. Directly above the graph, where the data model name appears, we can click and select to change to a different model we would like to explore. On the top right side of the Ontology Explorer, we can find Manage Ontology Tags, where users can create and edit tags of concepts, properties, or relationships. Ontology tags are used to organize and label parts of your knowledge graph with key value pairs, making it easier to manage and navigate your data. For example, we might tag data with a key such as priority and a value of high to categorize it efficiently. Next to Ontology Tags is Open Swagger UI, which when clicked on will open a dedicated Swagger Open API endpoint to interact with the data model using REST API. The next icon opens a list of the cached resources so users can understand what is materialized in the model, seeing all the when, where, and how details. Then, we have the version history button, where users can see all the actions and changes that took place in the model with the ability to compare changes and rerun any of the actions that took place in the past. Finally, all the way to the right, we can find the knowledge graph model settings, which give us many options, such as the ability to change the node sizes in the model, change the node colors based on things like inheritance level, branches and leaves, or even mapped versus unmapped concepts. We can rearrange the graph layout and set it automatically, or we can turn that off and rearrange the model layout manually. We can choose to show the model with the collapsed view, only showing the first level concepts as we see it now. This can be useful when the ontology is very large and when we want to focus on a specific hierarchy. Or we can choose to display the extended model concepts. Next, we can choose whether or not to show the descriptions when hovering over concepts. Similarly, when hovering over concepts or their edges, we can decide whether or not to see them highlighted. We can also view the model layout horizontally, which looks like this. Another way to view the model would be using the legacy layout, which uses a legacy algorithm to arrange the model, so instead of stretching it from left to right, the model will expand within the screen borders from top to bottom. 
Finally, you can also choose whether to show or hide the model legend, which portrays the different elements that may appear in the model. And that's it. That wraps up our overview of the Ontology Explorer. I invite you to watch the next tutorials of the Ontology Explorer so you can see all its features in action and learn about the best practices. You can find the tutorial playlist on our YouTube channel or directly on our Timber website. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at all. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in our next videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.